What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with some coverage of the last Hakes auction that just ended on Wednesday night. And I think I'm going to do three videos for the vintage Star Wars action figures that sold. I'm going to cover the early Star Wars in one video, this video, uh, The Empire Strikes Back in another video, and then I'll finish off with The Return of the Jedi and Power of the Force line. And I also will do after that probably a comic book video just covering some of the key books that sold across a bunch of different grades so hope you don't mind all of these different videos but i think in general uh, this hakes auction went a lot better than the last one obviously there was a ton of awesome items i know a number of you picked up some awesome items in the comments below leave uh, a comment and let me know what you picked up and whether you thought it was a good deal in general the high grade and the rare stuff sold for uh, you know, towards the upper end of the range and some of the other mid-grade stuff uh, sold for good deals, as is always with Hakes. The big whales go after the big items. And uh, there were some good deals, but uh, I, I've got kind of a, a wide range of items here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, the first one was that incredible first shot prototype Princess Leia Organa. So here it is. It was graded AFA 50 pre-production cape on this one. Uh, the figure has been hand-painted, hand-glued, and was issued with a thinner, hand-cut pre-production case. So very, very rare item. The, and I'm going to talk about the value codes as we go through this and where it ended up. Uh, the value code on this one was 10 to 20. I thought it might get towards that $10,000 number just because of the rarity of this one. Very rare item. And uh, it, But it did come in below the estimate. It sold for $8,260. I mean, you know, if you're in the budget for that kind of thing, that's probably a pretty good deal. There can't be many of these out there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is interesting that it did come in even below the low end of the value code. Uh, next up was an AFA 85 double telescoping Luke Skywalker. Uh, so, uh, you know, a very high grade example. These are not particularly rare. There's lots of them out there. Tough to find in an AFA 85 though. Um, and this one, the value code was 2000 to 5000. I thought for sure it would clear 2000. I was thinking more like 2500. It came in at 2124 after the buyer's premium of 18% which is what Hakes charges to the buyers on the winning bid. So all of these prices I'm going to quote are after the buyer's premium. But $21.24 is a very good deal relative to where these were selling even a year ago. I mean, you're probably closer to $3,000, if not higher than that. So uh, $21.24, uh, pretty decent deal, I think, for that one. Uh, some of the more rare double telescoping Sabre figures were also in this auction, including an AFA 80 Ben Kenobi with white hair. Uh, this one, the value code was 10 to 20. I was thinking uh, probably towards the upper end of that range at 20, uh, just given that I've seen some ungraded examples sell for $28,000 on Facebook. Rebel Hideout had one that I think was it was either ungraded or it was a, a very high grade. It might have been an AFA 80 plus that sold for 28, so I can't remember. But uh, I was thinking at least 20 on this one, but it came in at 16,354. So close to that, but kind of mid range, kind of in between the two value code numbers. Uh, the double telescoping Saber Darth Vader was an AFA 80. Uh, this one came in below the value code of 10 to 20. It came in at 9,280. But, uh, you know, it seems like double telescoping Saber. Vader's have come down in price. There was one at the last LCG auction encased with all three figures uh, that sold for, I think, 24000 for all three figures. Uh, this one for just the Vader sold for ninety two eighty. dollars uh, Pretty awesome uh, item there. Uh, just hard to gauge w whether that's a good deal or not, but it seems like that number is down. I was thinking it would be at least five figures, uh, but still ninety two eighty was the final number. Uh, this number was absolutely shocking and further proof that AFA 85s on Hakes for rare items or very sought after items. This is not particularly rare, but certainly sought after. Uh, this is the early bird mail away set with a double telescoping saber baggie for Luke. So it has Luke, Leia, Chewbacca, and R2-D2, which, you know, is, is a very, a very desirable item. One of the very earliest Kenner items that you could get. And it did have the double telescoping Saber Luke inside. So it was an AFA 85. And as we always talk about, the bidders really go after those. The value code of 5 to 10 I knew was way too low. I was thinking like 15,000. 
uh, but the winning bid was 25570 So it blew past all numbers, blew past my expectations, and it's just one of those things with Hakes. I mean, you know, it's international buyers, lots of big money, probably lots of money over in Saudi Arabia <laughs> and, you know, in oil money, things like that. So a lot of these big international players go after the AFA 85 examples and they really bid them up. We saw that in the last takes auction with a, a yellow blister AFA 85 Raincore Keeper that sold for like $3,500, just something completely ridiculous. Um, this wasn't ridiculous. Um, I'm not terribly shocked by a $25,000 number, but it certainly blew past the numbers I was I was expecting. I was thinking like 15 to 18, and it finished at 25,570. Uh, next up is an AFA 85 12 back B Luke Skywalker, another number that really surprised me at the upper end. The value code was 2,000 to 5,000, and it came in almost at that upper end of the range at 4,886. So, uh, considering it was a punched example. Uh, you know, usually the unpunched examples are where you start to see those really big numbers. But because it was an AFA 85 archival case, clear blistered, everything was gorgeous about it, but it was punched. So I was a little surprised. I was thinking kind of $3,500 to $3,800, maybe four at the upper end, but it blew past that number as well. Uh, next up was an AFA 80 plus small head Han Solo. Uh, the value code was 1000 to 2000 It came in at sixteen eighty seven. And again, this was a punched example with a big price sticker on there, the Toys R Us price sticker. So that probably kept the value down a little bit, but it was the small head Han, the early version of Han. And I, I thought that was a pretty good deal. I, that's a number I, I could have lived with if I had been in the market for one. So congrats, whoever got that one. I, I think that's a very good deal. Um, next up was a 12 back A C-3PO. This did not have the SKU on the footer stand. So uh, this is kind of the second iteration. It was a punched example as well. AFA 85, straight 85s. Uh, the value code of two to five thousand dollars. It came in slightly above that low end at twenty one forty one after the buyer's premium. So uh, probably a fair number just given what it was. And uh, you know th there were a number of other twelve and twenty backs that I'm not covering. I'm just kind of giving you a broad picture of the items, but uh, I, th I think that that's a pretty good deal. And there were some other AFA 80s and 75s for some of these 12 backs uh, that sold for very fair numbers. Uh, next up, here's another one that really kind of came in higher than I expected in the current market environment. Uh, we've seen a few mint on card vinyl cape Jawas that sold, but not of not many of them that were AFA 85 with no staining on the vinyl cape. That's something that we've talked about in past videos, how even high grade examples over time degrade inside the blister for this vinyl cape Jawa. This one did not have any uh, degrading that I could tell. Potentially on the right hand side right here, there could be some staining. Uh, that, that doesn't look like a shadow to me. So maybe this one did have some staining. looks like it's got some uh, other kind of stuff going on on the vinyl cape. So maybe I'm wrong there, but uh, that one still sold, uh, even despite potentially some staining on the right-hand side of the cape. It still blew past the upper end of the value code of 10000 to 20000 I personally was expecting between fifteen dollars and $18,000 on this number or on this item. Uh, unpunched though, no price sticker, AFA 85. The figure score of 90 probably does not apply anymore. Uh, but, you know, again, I, I'm just going on... on uh, yeah, okay, so it, I forgot to look on the dis item description, but it does say age discoloration on right side of cape. So I was right there that this is not a shadow, that that is, in fact, uh, some staining on the vinyl cape Jawa. So that, so that really surprises me that it came in for the winning bid of 23837 despite that staining. To me, I mean, again, no offense if you happen to be the person that bought this. I doubt that anyone who watches my videos buys $25,000 items. They're too busy, like, starting, you know, tech startups, okay? <laughs> so, but still, I, to me, this is an overpay. I, I think that th this this one sold much higher than it probably should have, given the, the, uh, given the discoloration. Because, you know, if you think about it, what's, what's this figure going to look like 15 years from now? I would think that that discoloration is only going to get worse. That's my personal opinion. But anyway, it still sold for twenty three eight thirty seven, and it does seem like uh, they a lot of the big buyers are breaking the cardinal rule that I talk about: buy the figure, not the grade, right? Because grading on these early figures, especially, 
kit may not apply anymore. And, and that's the case on this one because the figure score of 90 does not apply anymore given the discoloration. I would wager that if you took this item, cracked it out, resubmitted it to AFA, it probably would get at best like a 75. So it's not really an AFA 85. And to me, I would rather have an AFA 75 that's correctly labeled and pay probably in the neighborhood of $10,000 less than what this sold for. So uh, here's another good angle there that I didn't see. So here's the discoloration on that vinyl cape Jawa. So I've beaten a dead horse by this point, but I think that's a drastic overpay. Uh, next up, another one that really surprised me. This one was a square bubble plastic tray version for the 12 back B Jawa AFA 85, straight 85s. Uh, certainly every bit of an 85 still, uh, but it's still, it's sold for over double what the value code was. And I thought the value code was a correct, you know, sometimes the value codes are too low or too high. Uh, that Hakes assigned them pre-auction. In this case, I think that value code was probably dead on the money. I, I think it was, you know, probably at max, max about a $2,000 item. It sold for $4,489. That is a crazy number to me and uh, nowhere near what I would pay. Admittedly, that, that bubble variation is very rare and it's very sought after. And, and this is high grade. It's straight 85s. But, you know, this is the have and have nots. Even in kind of a down market uh, these big players that are looking for very specific items in AFA 85 grade, they don't care whether they pay 2000 or they pay $4,500. And I think that was a good example of that. Uh, next up was a 12-back Palatoy Darth Vader archival case. It was a punched example, AFA 80. And I thought this was a great buy. This is a number that was, in my mind, a steal. Uh, it, it, the value code was 1000 to 2000 It sold for 1330 that is a number I would pay all day long. And if I had been in the market for an early 12-back Vader, which maybe I will one day, maybe I won't, I don't know. But to me, $1,300, $1,330 for that uh, is an absolute bargain for a foreign card back with that awesome Palatoy logo. $1,330, pay that all day long. That that was a really good deal. Uh, next up was the Gerastellari. Sand People, and this one is, it was obviously the Italian market, Garastellari, AFA 80, 80, 75, 80. Uh, the value code was 1,000 to 2,000. It came in right right in line, uh, right in the middle there at 14, 16. Another number I would have paid all day long. Um, you know, they vary a lot. You know, I feel like the, the Sand People on the, on the Italian Harbor card backs are relatively easy to find. Uh, the Sand People and Chewbacca, I believe, are probably the two most common, maybe... Maybe the Vader, I don't know. Uh, but this this one is not hard to find. I see these pop up every so often, even on eBay. Uh, but fourteen, sixteen, probably a pretty fair deal. Uh, I would argue that if this was on eBay, it probably wouldn't even sell for that much. But th that's just my guess. Um, but I, I think that's a number I'd pay. Uh, next up, uh, here was a beauty. This one was the Meccano Rectangle Card Princess Leia. Not an item you see very often. And it came in towards the upper end of the value code, which I would expect. $4,543. It was an AFA 80 yellowed blister, very slightly yellowed, unpunched. 80, 85, and 80 were the subscores on that one. So that's a stunner. That, again, you know, you don't see this very often at all. In fact, I, I can't remember off the top of my head ever seeing this come up for sale. So this was truly an incredible collection. Probably uh, the type of item you only see once every 10 years. I mean, who knows? But uh, great item, uh, absolutely stunning. And uh, $4,500 took that home. Uh, next up, here's another good deal. This one was a 21 back B R5 D4. It was a punched example with a price sticker, and I preached that all day long. Uh, look for the punched examples for these early card backs at Hakes, along with price stickers on them, and you usually get really good deals on them. AFA 80, and uh, it sold for $785 after the buyer's premium. That is a great deal. A really, really good deal, well below the value code of $1,000 to $2,000. So, uh, again, that's a number I would pay, you know, without even thinking about it if, if I had the money for it. So I actually do have some money set aside right now, but uh, I purposefully did not go on Hakes last night because I didn't want to be tempted. And this is probably one I would have been tempted on because I have a 21 back A. I do not have the 21 back B for R5D4. It would have been nice to pair with it. And I could see myself bidding on this and caving to my internal kind of financial discipline and buying it. So I'm glad I didn't bid on it though, uh, or I, I'm glad I didn't go on Hakes at all. <laughs> so a uh, good deal that I, I, th I think on that R5D4. Uh, next up was a 21 back B power droid. And you can tell this was recently labeled 
but or recently graded by AFA because it says short V mold on the label. So uh, they just started doing that fairly recently. Uh, this one was punched with a price sticker as well. <clears throat> and it was an AFA 80 and it sold for twelve ninety eight. I thought I thought that was a pretty fair deal. Uh, I thought the value code was probably a little low on that one. It seems like the Power Droid tends to command a little bit of a premium relative to the Death Star Droid and the R five D four on these early uh, twenty and twenty one backs. So I, I, that's a number that's probably in line with market and, and probably an underestimate by a, by uh, Hakes in terms of the value code. Uh, next up, I've got some of those special action figure sets. They all sold for pretty good money. Uh, next, uh, the first was the her Hero set with Luke X-Wing, Han Solo, and Obi-Wan Kenobi graded AFA 75+. Plus. And the value code was five to $10,000. It sold for $8,696. Big number on that one. It was a punched example with a price sticker, unfortunately, right over top of uh, the special offer sticker on the front there. But uh, pretty awesome set. And uh, that price did not disappoint at all. Uh, next up is probably one of the more common ones and why it sells for so cheap. Uh, you usually do see the creature set pretty regularly. It was graded AFA 75. And it came in kind of towards the lower end of the value code at $2,758 $2, was the final sales price. Uh, which is kind of towards the lower end of the value code at 2000 to five, uh, 5000 Uh Next up was the Droid Set graded AFA 50. So this one was a low grade. Uh, it still sold for $3,245, which is kind of right in the middle there of the two to $5,000 number. Uh, next up was the Millennium Falcon Mint in Sealed Box. And uh, this one was graded only AFA 60, but this is the earliest iteration, I believe, uh, for you know, I, I don't know if there was an LP logo for the Millennium Falcon. This one did not have it, so maybe this is the second iteration. But it did have the Star Wars racetrack, so very early example. The value code was five thousand to ten thousand dollars, despite it being only an AFA sixty, and it came in at forty nine oh eight. So uh, right, right towards the low end of the value code there, but definitely a stunner of an item. You don't see the early Millennium Falcon very often. Uh, next up was the special offer uh, land speeder that included a pack-in with the baggies for C-3PO and R2-D2. It was graded AFA Qualified 80, obviously, since the contents were opened up and displayed uh, below, or excuse me, above the uh, the land speeder box, which has the land speeder inside. Uh, the value code was two to five thousand. It came in at thirty two forty five. So I, you know, I would say that if I, you know, give again rough numbers here, but I would say that fifty to sixty percent of the items probably came in at the middle of the value code, with probably thirty to forty percent coming in below the value code, the low end of the value code, and then probably 10 to 15% or so coming in above the value code. That seems to be kind of the going rate right now for a lot of these items, but uh, uh, certainly some beauties. Uh, next up was the Sonic Controlled Land Speeder. This is an item you don't see pop up often at all. It was only a qualified AFA 60, uh, so it came in at uh, $1,108, and the value code was $1,000 to $2,000. So again, this was just a very broad snapshot of some of these early Star Wars items that sold. There were certainly dozens and dozens of other items in this kind of era for the vintage Kenner line. But uh, tomorrow we will cover the Empire Strikes Back, and then after that, cover the Return of the Jedi, Power of the Force, Tri-Logos, things like that. But uh, pretty interesting auction, certainly one of the best inventory lists I've ever seen at Hakes. And I hope that some of you were able to pick some of these awesome items up. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll be back soon.